Hi, I'm Daniel Press from East Hall High School. And I'm John Hardison from East Hall High School. And we're doing a relay math game to review. All right, let's talk about the game. So you guys are in your groups right now, and you can see we've got the tables up here. Up on the tables, we've got whiteboards. And what you're gonna have to do is when I put a problem up on the board, I'm gonna put an equation up on the board like this, and I'm gonna ask you to do five things. I'm gonna ask you to tell me, are there any horizontal shifts or vertical shifts? All right, so for example, you might write horizontal shift left two, vertical shift up seven. Then I'm gonna ask you what the end point is. Okay, so you'll have to tell me what the end point is. And then I'll ask you what the X intercepts and Y intercepts are. And then the last thing I'm gonna have to have you do is graph it, okay? So on your, on your whiteboards up here, we got extra big whiteboards to fit all that stuff in. You're gonna have five answers. The shifts, the end point, the Y intercept, the X intercept, and a graph. And it can just be a graph with a couple points on there. Specifically, if you graph these three points, that would be enough, all right? Anybody have any questions about that? So each team starts behind the line. You guys are going to line up. And then when I put a problem up on the board, the first person in the line is going to run up here. They're going to work out the first part, which might be the shifts. And then once they've got the first part down, that's it. Each person can only do one part. They've got to run back to their group, tag the next person in. That person's going to run up and do the next part, another part of the problem. And when they get that done, they're going to run back. And we're going to keep tag teaming relay race style until your team thinks you have the problem done and it's correct. And then I'll come and check it. And then just like yesterday, the team that finishes first with everything correct is going to get more points. But I will still give you guys points even if you don't finish first, as long as your team does get it correct before I call time on the whole thing. As they do their one part, I'm able to walk along this line right here and check their answers and kind of give them hints and, and um, small little corrections here and there. Like when they're doing the horizontal shift, I can just walk by and see, hey, remember the sign changes for horizontal shift? Or when they're doing y-intercept, I can walk by and say, hey, remember you got to plug in x equals zero to find y-intercept. Um, and so it's a great way for me to, to do a lot of little corrections for a, a wide amount of students. It's also a great way for the students to get engaged and try several problems and work as a team. So I think it really went well. And uh, John Hardison, the, the master of games, helped me gamify some of the things that we do. Um, the basic idea is they're over here in their groups. And then we've got them lined up each person starts here, runs up to the whiteboard, does the first part, so maybe horizontal shift, right seven, and then John has different games that they have to do in order to relay back and forth. One of the games that we did was the ball toss, where the person will have to be behind the line and toss the ball to their partner like this, and they'll have to do three catches or so, and then they can switch places and then that person goes up and does the next part of the problem, like finding the y-intercept or the x-intercept or something like that. So it's, it's really great. The kids get into it. They love it. Um, I'm able to kind of do um, formal checks or informal checks on them to see uh, what they know, what they need help with, and also do like little corrections on the whiteboards as we go. And at the end of the problem, if I see several groups are struggling with the same concept or the same part of a problem, then I'm able to come up here to one of these whiteboards at the front of the classroom and just say, hey, I noticed everybody was struggling with the x-intercept. Um, in this problem, there was no x-intercept, for example, it's an extraneous solution. So we're able to talk about that and kind of do a whole class instruction in the middle of the game. And I think it worked out really well. We did it, we did it as a two-day activity. Um, we had other problems. That, that we mixed in there too, not just the graphic radicals ones. And overall, the kids really loved it. We had several kids say that, that it was the funnest thing they've done all year. So I, I recommend it.
So please notice as the students come in, they will be directed towards the slideshow that tells them exactly which team they are in. They will know if they are teams one through seven or if they are A, B, C, or D. Obviously, this is just a practice roster that would have 10 teams, but you can see how we have this all laid out. And please take a notice the video in the upper left hand corner and how the students come in and know exactly where they should be seated. And then looking at the other side of the classroom with the dry erase boards, you can see that everybody or all teams should have a dry erase board, markers, an eraser, a ball that they can do the physical challenges with, and they will have everything they need, even calculators. Pretty good setup. And here's just a quick look at an example slideshow that Mr. Prest has used for this math relay review game. And again, you can see how the students know exactly where to begin. And then the next slide, he breaks down the game. He even has a diagram of how the class is structured. And then thereafter, he has some video, video timers that he may use, copy and paste in. And then, of course, each slide is then going to have the problems. And it'll have how many parts of the problem they have to work. And then he'll go through afterwards and teach. All right, so we're just going to give you a few examples, uh, actually about eight to ten examples of some things you can do for different challenges, but please be creative as you want as you think of these new things. Like Mr. Press mentioned earlier, we start out usually with a simple three ball toss, so three catches. Yep, so one, two, three, and then they can switch. But notice that you cannot be on the line. We actually will have a referee if we have a co-teacher just to show you how far we go into it. We actually have one co-teacher wearing this with a whistle, and they will blow and uh, blow the whistle if they see that somebody is on the line or stepping over the line. Over the line, yeah. It creates a lot of anxiety, but the kids really get into that. So that's one of our simple things we do. And then later what we'll do is we'll do the same toss. We'll do the same toss, but maybe it's opposite hand only. So if I'm right-handed, I can only catch and toss left-handed. Sounds very, very simple, but students will really struggle with that. You can go three, four, five tosses, whatever you need switch. to do, and then you switch. Okay. Now, one we can't really show right now because we don't have a third person, but let's say these are two students right here tossing back and forth. You can have a co-teacher doing what we call the distraction, and that teacher is just distracting the whole time. They cannot touch the ball. They cannot touch the person, but you can say three, four, or five tosses back and forth. Obviously, if they drop, they got to start over. I and think then, one of the best ones was the, uh, the feet catch one. So if I'm over here, I just finished working out my part of the problem, and then I'm going to roll the ball to John, and he's got to catch it in between his heels. And he's got to stay behind the line when he does that. <clears throat> so he bounced it off, ball went behind the line again, got a re-roll. Now we have some other ones, some easy ones, but just going to go through those real quickly. So obviously somebody runs up. Opposite handwriting only, which is very, very simple. You can have the spinner. Be careful with this one. They must spin five times before they go. Some teachers don't want to do that one because obviously they get a little bit uh, off direction there. And then we also have the other team distraction. So you can have one team member from the team before. They can come up and they can talk the entire time. They cannot touch. They cannot be inappropriate but they can be talking the whole time. Somebody else from the team is up here so they can distract them. The, the handshake relay. The handshake relay. So Daniel, Daniel's right there, he comes, he just finished writing uh, the problem out. We go right, left, right, left, and then we can go. Something like that. Now you can change up your handshake, you can do whatever you want to do. So we have another one called the elbow pass. Let's see if I got enough room right here. This is tough. There we go. Double pass, and then boom, I'm ready to write. And so you can do the hopper, just one, one leg, right leg, right leg, left leg, whatever you want to do. Now you can have them continue to hop if you want, or they can stop once they get there. Another one we have, just take a simple basketball. You can do like five bounce passes. Boom, then we're ready to go. Some other simple ones we can do are um, walking backwards. So when it's time to exchange, we can go the walking backwards route like this. 
We can also do the, when you come up to the table, you can't start writing until you do um, five push-ups or five jumping jacks. So you run up to the table, can't start writing on the board until you do five push-ups. <laughs> or, or same thing when we switch, we can do five jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, and then we can start writing. So small things like that to get the kid's heart going, um, get them excited, get them energized, um, are also some, some good ideas to, uh, to do for the switch. And of course in our video that follows this, you'll see some examples of in live or in class live action. So take a look at some of the rounds we use and definitely take a look at the engagement you will see with the students. Hey, good luck with the relay review game. See y'all. Everybody, get somebody on the line. You guys ready? Are you on the line? All right. If you got something on your whiteboard, make sure you erase it when you get up here. And go. Go, 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 go. First person, tell me to shift. That's all you're doing. First person, that's all you can do is tell me to shift. All right, second person, second person, Y intercept. something that looks like this. Zero equals, um, what is that, two plus square root of x plus four. You might subtract two from both sides, and then you might square both sides. And you can actually solve for an x-intercept, but when you do that, you've got to check your answer. So yes, you can solve and get zero, and I saw a couple teams like this team right here that solved it correctly and got zero, but when you plug in zero, that's the question. Does it work when you plug it back into the problem? And here, you'll see that it does not work. If you plug zero back into the original, all right, first person that comes up. First person, hold on, Daniel's getting dis disqualified. Got the bottom line. All right, first person, I want to know horizontal shift or vertical shift. This next one has both. Got to tell me both of them. Ready? Go, 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 go. 